Good morning, good morning. My name is Wendy Little with Creation Depot, and today I'm going to be talking about the Content Aware Fill tool in Photoshop and a quick way to use it and a more involved way to use it so that you can kind of make your choice about which way is going to be more useful to you in your workflow. Before we get started, I do want to point out that we have an email newsletter that I would highly recommend you sign up for. It's located at creationdepot.com forward slash email. Please open it in a new window to make the YouTube gods happy. I would appreciate that. Um, but basically what it does is it sends out little quick action items that let you update your website with easy things that are going to be like designer based that you can make your website look better over time. And it sends out once a week, not a big deal. It's 10 minute chunks and they're really, really easy to do. So with that, let's get started. So to first thing you want to do for the quick and easy way is you want to select the space that I want to clear up. I want to get rid of this, right? But I'm going to over select because in the first way that I'm going to show it to you, it's drawing its information about what it's going to pull from by what you select. So I'm going to over select what I want to refill and then I'm going to go up to edit. I'm going to go to fill. I'm going to go select, select <laughs> content aware. It's probably on foreground color by default, but you want to select content aware. And then they're all a bunch of different blending modes. I do suggest that you go back and play with these, but that you'll have a better sense of playing with them with the second way I'm going to show you because right here you can't really tell, but in the second way you can, and that will make sense when we get there, but go ahead and hit okay. It's going to think about it for a second and then it's going to fill it in. See how seamless that looks like you don't see a line right here where it ended. It's great. It's wonderful. Now I'm going to undo that because I want to show you the other way to do this. So this is the more involved way, which is very helpful if you're doing things that have either people in them or like this is just a pink wall, right? But you might have things that have other subjects in them. You might have grasses, you might have uh, flowers, you might have something, a whole bunch of little tiny pieces that you need it to be a little bit more control over when you're working with it. But still same thing. You don't have to select anything. You just go to edit. Oh, my apologies. You do have to select it. Go to content aware fill, not just fill, but content aware fill. And then you see over here. So this is the area that it's going to fill in. So you do have to select it. I'm sorry about that. You do have to select it, but over here on the right, can I make this a little bit bigger? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so over here you have options, right? This is your preview of what it's going to look like. Now this is, you know, we're just filling in a black, a blank space on a wall. So it's not that big of a deal right now, but I wanted to show you what these things mean. The color over here, the green indicates the area that it's going to be pulling its information from right? And you can select the opacity. This doesn't mean anything for what you're doing, except that it helps you see what your, what the content is going to be selected from a little bit easier or worse, right? It, it doesn't change how it's going to do its job. And then further down here, um, you can, and yeah, you can flip it around if you want to be the excluded area where it's not going to be pulling the information from, you can flip it around there. And honestly, it's, it's six and one half dozen of another. It's easy. Um, and then the next one you want to do is go to fill settings and then you're going to choose your color adaptation. Do you want it to be very high? Do you want it to be regular? Do you want it to be high? Notice they're all high. <laughs> you, they want you to use the color adaptation. I just go by default and I've never really had a problem or complaint. If you're doing something really intricate, go higher. That's all that means. Your rotation adaption, you can have it select like have you ever seen like the on your phone like you have the option to like it will auto adjust your image so that you know, the people are standing straight instead of like on an angle or something um or if you take a picture of a stationary object it will automatically write it that's what this is it's talking about that oh thank you so much dropbox for interrupting um and then you go down here and you can select scale or mirror um mirror just flips it what you're choosing from and so scale will let you select um like it will all try to auto match the, the objects that are around it, right? Like you can actually hover on this and hold and it will give you an example with a video of what it's doing. So like it's readjusting those bricks so that they will fit in that space. And the same with mirror, it will describe it, but all mirror is, is it just flips the content so that it fits a little bit better. That's all that means. And then if you go down here, this is also important because in your workflow, you want to output to a new layer. You want to do a duplicate layer of the one that you're working on, but it puts the content fill on that layer. Like it's like a finished product on a new layer. Um, or do you want to do it to the current layer? 
if you're doing something really intricate, obviously put it on a new layer because more layers is the better. You can always work with more layers. If you squish stuff together and put it like on the same thing and rasterize it, you're, you're out of luck. So I always say new layer and then I hit okay. And look, there you go. It's all set. So those are the two ways to do it. One really quick way. If you've got a really plain background, like I do, or a more complex way, if you've got like a field or something that you're trying to make look real realistic and you just need to fill in like extra space. So that's it for now. I hope this has been helpful. Please do give it a like and consider subscribing because it does make the YouTube gods happy. Um, and that's, that's all that matters on YouTube algorithms, right? So that's it for now. Take care. Bye.